technique in the fundamental syllabus this week is going to be the Ezekiel choke from Matt. Uh, it's probably one of the most simple and direct attacks uh, which you'll see from white belt all the way through to black belt. Uh, the previous technique, the armbar from Matt, is doable at white belt but it's very hard to force upon a defensive opponent. This is a much safer option that is extremely effective early on and still remains a valid tool in your arsenal later on. You need to know them both, but they come in different times for their most effective. So, starting in the mount position. So there's lots of different ways to get it. I mean, there's, there's ways of skipping steps, but usually the way that I'm going to attack the um, Ezekiel for mount, I'm going to start from a low mount, which means, if it's just a way of it, I'm going to start with my hand out, my feet crossed, underneath my opponent's backside, my heels pulling upwards, and my hips pushing down. I'm not gonna go crazy with that right now because it's mean, but that is my basic position. Okay, this is one of the safer places. Some guys will go for a full grapevine, hooking ankle to ankle, that's fine, and the hands will be somewhere. The hands will always need to be decently high up. You don't want the person trapping them in. If I put them here and here, they can still be out. Again, you can defend, but you're never really stable if that's going on. So you wanna be at least sort of your he uh, heels of your palm uh, above the top of their head. Probably a little bit higher, honestly. It gets you to go a little bit wider with your sort of semicircular basing. That means your shoulder can be part of the movement um, and makes it a little bit uh, easier to defend against bridging and things like that. So again, okay, you can either hook your feet or cross your feet, both are fine. Um, so we're gonna start at this angle, we're gonna change around afterwards, but um, okay, so we're gonna basically take uh, from this position, again, hands out, feet crossed or not. One hand's gonna go underneath the head, we're gonna lift it up a little bit, and we're gonna slide the other arm under and drop our shoulder into this person's face, okay? It's not particularly pleasant. I'm gonna come around. Yeah, okay. So, important thing here, as soon as I do this, as soon as I commit my shoulder to my uh, partner's face, I lose this hand facing out on my left. It makes it very, very hard. For, uh, if they bridge in this direction, then I'm gonna have a hard time. I, I can do it, but I have to pull it away. And if I'm too slow, I will just get stuck. So immediately to avoid this happening, or to limit the, the risk of it happening anyway, it, I want to make sure that my weight transfers hard over to this side, which means I want to put my shoulder into her face and then shift my hips and my hand and my weight over here. So again, for her to bridge towards um, my left and her right, it's very difficult when her head is being forced hard in this direction, and bridging this way doesn't matter because I still have the hand to base with. So usually we're gonna start from that. So this hand goes relatively deep behind the head, um, so my whole forearm is behind. I can't be here or here, some people have trouble with this. If there's this much space, I will not have enough arm left over for the choke later. So I want to be all the way set in, like you're doing side control or half guard, trying to apply shoulder pressure, because that's how deep you need to be. Okay, so smashing into the face here, hand out a little bit. Usually, um, to maintain pressure, I will open my guard if my feet, open my feet. If they were crossed, that helps me really uh, drop my left hip down like I'm sprawling effectively. So from here now, I'm gonna put, uh, I need to try and do two things. I want my hand that's behind her head to come in and grab four fingers inside my sleeve. Again, anytime I think I'm worried about this, I can always come back. I don't fully commit, I don't bring it all the way to like here, because then again, I don't have time to base back down. So we bring it here, here if I need to, still at a basing range. Then my temple goes onto her temple, and I start to open her head out to this side. Okay, I want to open some space between the base of her jaw uh, and uh, sort of her collarbone there to make some space for this hand. So I want to open the head up, make a fist, circle that fist around, go underneath her jawline, and then bring my knuckles all the way across to the other side of her head here. Okay, some people will grab the cloth on the other side here. Uh, I personally tend to open my hand out in a chopping motion so my fingers are on top of my other uh, bicep, but there's different styles for this. Once I have cleared her uh, center of her throat uh, and got to the other side, we are locked in. If I go too early, I'm still in the middle or on this side, we're not locked in, I need to get past that midpoint here. What would be the Adam's apple on most people? So once I'm here, I'm probably gonna have to slide my left elbow back a bit now to uh, square my chest back up again. If I was deep, then my elbow should be behind her neck. I will need to adjust a little bit here to get some more slack to work with. Now I have both of these things. I want to extend my arms away as much as possible and then move my chest and back away as well. Well, sorry. Okay, that, um, I mean, we're creating kind of a knifing motion. I'm gonna do it one more time just to warn you in advance. Um, but basically I want to make sure this comes around here. The person's neck is in this gap and then I want to cut it and chop away. Okay, if I'm over, I'm actually here because the neck's it, but it can be seen as either way. You guys should do it either way, but here and here. So this is like a pair of scissors chopping through their throat. Uh, most people will feel this in front of their throat and their windpipe first, which is why it gets a very quick reaction. 
Um, but eventually, if, if, if people are defending against that, you still will choke. Um, you will get a blood choke on the side. So it doesn't stop just because you're not on the throat. But most people, it will be on the throat and thus more unpleasant initially. So, again, uh, again feet either hooked in or crossed under. Either is fine. Underneath the head, hook it up, slide under, shoulder in the face. Here, this hand ready for facing where necessary. Okay, again, make sure we are just tilted heavy towards this side, favoring this direction. Okay, this hand comes back, again, not too far. Don't let the elbow drift in, we don't want to be here. We still need to have this wide base. So again, even if I can't base the hand out, I still have a wide base with my elbow. Four fingers go inside, uh, temple to temple, open it up. Usually we make a fist, you don't have to make a fist, but it's much stronger for when she's defending with her hand, so it does help a little bit. So we slide under, move to the other side, probably adjust your left elbow back a little bit and that squares us up here. And now usually we lift our chest up and away as we knife the hands. Okay, uh, the less pedal version where you drive, drive your fist directly into their throat, usually not as effective because it's harder to control, but you will see it and it will get a reaction most of the time. That is the Ezekiel choke from Matt.